Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are going to do a quick little video showing a variety of techniques to hold down your workpiece for your CNC. Now there's a lot of debate about which one of these techniques works best and which one you should use. What I would say right off the bat is you use whatever technique works best for you. They will all hold down your workpieces. Some do have pros and cons to them, which I will cover in the video, but generally speaking they will all get the job done so use what you are comfortable with and what is best for your specific application your specific type of hold down needs let's go ahead and jump right into the video the first technique that I would like to cover is using clamps of any form whether they're these T-track clamps or whether they're quarter 20 hold downs. Now you can use that if you have an appropriately configured waste board. In this case I happen to have my T-track system here so I can use these clamps to hold down my work pieces. Alternatively if you do have the quarter 20 inserts in your waste board system here you can also use something like that as well. They work very well. I find that they are probably the best at holding down your piece and making sure that it won't move while you're cutting. However, a big downside of these clamps are generally the height. I have hit a couple of these clamps a couple times with my machine, especially the lower end of the Z gantry has a tendency to uh, hit these if you're not careful and set your uh, Z height and your safety height properly. So just keep that in mind when you're using these clamps. Now you can get some lower profile version of these like this that I have right here, or change out the bolts for ones that are shorter if you don't need that extra height. You can also get these flat clamps here, which I use to square up my workpiece by aligning them along the edge and then use these uh, hold down clamps on the corners or the back side. All right, let's get on to the second technique. The next technique I would like to cover involves the use of some double sided tape. Now generally this comes in two forms, either carpet tape, which is very thin and highly tacky on both sides, or some foam double sided tape, which is what I used almost exclusively when I had first started into the CNC hobby. Both of them will work. I will tell you that the foam tape, uh, it makes your workpiece stick up just a little bit from the wasteboard, so that does reduce the probability that you will cut into your wasteboard. However, it does also have a tendency to gum up your bit if you do hit it. So that's just something to be aware of when you're using these double-sided tapes. I will link down below to some of the products that I've used in the past that I have found work well if you would like to choose this specific technique. The third technique I would like to cover is what is known as the blue tape and super glue method. Now this is a technique that I have used frequently in the past and I have actually been using it even more frequently because I've been doing a lot of work that requires access to the complete top of my work surface so I couldn't have any clamps getting in the way and I didn't want to uh, you know, waste a portion of the cutting area by using other techniques that I will cover in just a minute. The blue tape and super glue method is very straightforward. You get some blue tape I would recommend an inch and a half or two inch blue tape so you have a lot of contact surface area you will also need your favorite form of CA glue I happen to have the star bond medium thick here I do like the medium thick viscosity so it is not super runny like you get with the thin uh, but it's also not that gap filler which is very thick as well and then I also recommend using some accelerator here so what I will do is I will take the tape I will stick it on the workpiece I will take Take a, a corresponding piece of tape, stick it on the work surface. I will spray the work piece with a little bit of accelerator, put a little super glue down on the uh, on the work surface here, and then just push them together and hold it for about five to ten seconds, and it'll lock it into place. When you do use this technique, especially if you use the accelerator, you need to make sure that your work piece is aligned exactly where you want it, because you're not having a lot of options of moving around once that accelerator kicks in and really bonds that super glue down. I find this technique perhaps maybe one of the most uh, approachables. However, the downside is, is it does take a fair amount of time to set it up, uh, getting your tape lined out and all that other stuff. And then there's a lot of waste here. This tape is not inexpensive and super glue is not inexpensive. So it is not reusable by any stretch of the imagination. When you peel your workpiece off, all of this essentially gets thrown in the trash can, very similar to the double-sided tape technique where you have to peel that double-sided tape off and then throw it away. So the first couple techniques here, are not really something that you would want to use if you are being uh, economic, uh, economically
economically minded or uh, you want to do something for a very inexpensive manner, but uh, they do work very well as I have found through a lot of my projects. The next technique that I would like to cover involves the use of hot glue. Now this is also a very approachable technique, it's very easy to do, and there's a couple different ways that you can actually use the hot glue to mount your work piece to your work surface. So the two ways that I found that are most effective is you first run a bead around the sides of your work piece and you hold it down until the hot glue secures your work piece to your work surface. The other mechanism that works pretty well is down dabbing a little glue on the corners of your workpiece and maybe even in the center as well and then pushing down on it and holding it until uh, the, that hot glue fixes it to the surface. Now a couple caveats on the that technique that specifically putting the glue in the back. It might make your work surface not completely flat if you don't use the same amount of glue on all the sides and so that's something to be aware of and I also generally recommend putting a bead around the outside anyway. I have had a couple work pieces come loose using this hot glue mechanism whenever I did it to the bottom side rather than the corners. Now a quick tip to get a quick release of this hot glue, if you use rubbing alcohol it'll actually cause the hot glue to release from your material and then it just pops free. So you, that way you don't have to try to scrape it or use a screwdriver or a chisel or something like this to break it free. The rubbing alcohol works really really well to do that for that purpose. The last technique that I've used in the past and I have found work well is the use of screws or nails to hold down your workpiece. Now generally speaking, I take four screws, I screw it into the corner of my workpiece and that affixes your workpiece to your work surface very securely and very has very little chance of it moving around. I've also used a pin nailer. I do recommend a 23 gauge pin nailer over this 18 gauge uh, nailer that I have here. It does create smaller holes and it still holds equally as well and it's a little bit easier to remove from your work surface when you're done with your cutting operations. This one does work well but I would probably choose the 23 over the 18 just to make things easier if I were to do it again. So if you do choose to use screws to hold down your workpiece and you don't want to mar uh, your actual work surface, one thing that I recommend people do is use clamps to hold down a sacrificial board and then use the screws to hold down your actual workpiece. That way you're screwing into your sacrificial board, not into your work surface. Uh, I've used this technique in the past and it works really, really well. And it actually allows you to create a little bit of a jig out of this, uh, this sacrificial piece so you can slide your next piece in very easily and hold it down very quickly, especially if you're making uh, you know, a number of the same thing over and over again. It does allow you to align things very easily and get on with the cutting very, very quickly. So I do highly recommend that technique as well. The last two techniques I would like to cover are techniques that I have not personally used, but they are used a lot in production CNC settings and people who are doing these things professionally. And that is the use of a vacuum table or vacuum clamping or the use of a vise. Now a vacuum table is just what it sounds. It is a table that has perforated holes into it uh, and it pulls a vacuum on the work piece and holds the work piece firmly down. There's lots of different variants of this. Festool makes a vacuum setup. Uh, you can actually build vacuum tables. There's plenty of plans out there on the internet to make this happen. They're a little more complicated than something like this T-Track system here like this and you do need that extra vacuum pump but if this is something you want to get into and you want something that fixes very well the vacuum table is certainly an option. Now on the vice side again typically production and uh, professional CNC machines use vice to hold the material so that while it's milling it's you know it's very well secured to the machine. I would say you can affix a vise to something like this. However, they are generally fairly tall, so you'd probably want to raise your CNC up to use a vise with something like this because you will definitely hit the bottom of the Z gantry if you do not compensate for the extra height of the vise with your CNC. All right, well, that was a video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to make. It was a lot of fun to research all these different techniques. So I ran through the five different techniques that I have personally used with my CNC to hold down my work pieces to my work surface. My two preferred mechanisms are the clamps and the blue tape method. I do occasionally still use the hot glue whenever I need to, but generally speaking, my go-to is clamping and blue tape. 
As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, use whatever technique works best for your specific workflow and for your specific holding needs. There is no specific method that I would recommend over one over the other. It really depends on what you need in the time that you need it. So that's my best advice is use what works best for you. All right, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you so much for getting this far. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, well, I'd appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but leave your comments down below and tell us why so we can make future videos better. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. Once again, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired. Uh, you need some soup. <clears throat> You will also need some cy cy cyanoacrylate. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake. You know, should have prepared. <laughs>